Good morning, church. Let's stand and worship together this morning. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Then every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, who's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh. stop the Lord Almighty? Who can 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 stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, who's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh. Bow before the lion and the lamb. Well, I have some good news today. Number one, God is here. It's good news, right? Number two, we are starting Wednesday evening activities back on June 24th. And that's exciting, too. It's a sign of kind of things progressing, moving forward, getting back together, fellowship, discipleship, all that good stuff. So that's exciting. And uh, our VBS dates, uh, that's going to be on three Wednesdays, and that's starting on July 22nd, and then the 29th, and then August 6th are our VBS dates. Fifth? Fifth. I'm just kidding. Just testing you. You passed. Good job. Uh, so if 
you'd like to be in good graces with Pastor Grace, uh, and you feel led to volunteer to help out with that, we need you. And so we have our sign-up sheets out in the, the foyer area on the welcome desk if you feel so inclined, and maybe you got an extra jewel in your crown in heaven, maybe. Who knows? You can find out, sign up, and see. All right, so today is, is an awesome day because we are here together. So let's praise God and worship together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, and the Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace in every high. In stormy gale, my anchor holds within the bay. Come on, lift it up. My anchor holds within the bay. Christ alone, the cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Oh, in Christ alone, the cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all.
You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, right in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. When well, we believe, you way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, that is who you are. 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 Oh, that is who you are. 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 You are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the source of 
for me. This world has nothing 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 for me.
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Brenda. Pastor Grace. Sorry. Um, I, I'm not going to have the kids come down this morning, but I was going to have two helpers come and pass out the kid packs while I'm talking. Um, so can you guys see me? I know I'm kind of talking a little bit quiet, but can you see me? Yes. Okay. Um, can anybody tell me what this is? Out loud, can you yell it from your spots? Thank you. Gage, can you see it? Yeah? You can nod. You don't have to talk. Right? What about this? Does anyone know what this is? Remote. Yeah, so what do these things have in, in common? What's a name? That's a controller. Yeah, so these things control our devices. Um, they, they, they turn the sound on. Um, you can change the, the movie. Um, this one in particular, when you're playing your games, you can control your characters. Your characters can um, jump, run, leap, crawl, um, whatever it might be. Even we can check out the map and see what world we're exploring on our devices. Um, and so this thing can do so many things when we have it in our hand. Um, now, growing up when I was a little girl, I remember going into our house in Virginia and my siblings would be playing on um, their TV, their computer, um, whatever it was then. Um, they were playing The Legend of Zelda. I don't know if you guys seen that game. Um, it was one of our family favorites. So I remember sitting there watching them. They were so um, good at the game. They were flying through it. And I just remember sitting there and I wanted to play too. Have any of you guys ever, ever gone to a friend's house and um, just watch them play a game and it just seems like so much fun and you want to hold the controller too? And your friend might let you have the controller, might let you play, um, but because you're not as experienced with the game, you may be playing for 30 seconds and then you die. Your character dies because you didn't know what you were doing. You had no idea. It was just a hard game. But they did it so easy. How does that make sense? Now, Jesus was teaching on Sabbath day in the synagogue. So Sabbath um, is just the Jewish day of worship. So think of Sundays for us. And then um, um, the synagogue just means church. Um, that's what we know it as, is church. Um, so Jesus went on the Sabbath day, the day of worship, to the church. Um, and he was teaching. And he saw a man there. He saw a man that was that had an evil spirit within him. And Jesus went up to that man, and the, the evil spirit spoke to Jesus and asked him, what are you going to do? Are you going to destroy us? And Jesus went up to the man, and he, and he compelled the spirit to leave the man. And when Jesus walked into that man's life, his life changed forever. It wasn't the same anymore. So when Jesus took control, was in power in this man's life, his life changed forever. Now back to our, our friend's game. We're playing that game, and we have the controller in our hand, and we die. But our friend had the controller. When they had the controller, they were playing for a long time, and they didn't die. They were facing the same challenges we were, but it was so much easier for our friend to have it. And it's so much easier if we give the control to Jesus and he has it in his hands. He will walk us through those things. It might be hard. It might be overwhelming. But he's there and he has control. Will you guys pray with me today? Thank you, God, for your word and the things that you do, Lord. I pray that you would invade our hearts, that you would allow us to give you control in all aspects of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you've created. And Lord, I pray that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear your word today. Amen. And um, whenever we go on vacations, which we did two weeks ago, I've always asked Jesus, please, if it's possible, 
help us to be able to talk to somebody about you or to witness. And he's gracious to always send those divine appointments. When we went to Shipshawana, we don't normally go out and sit on the, on the, the patio around a, a fire. It's really hot, too. And I think I'm backing way up. But there was a couple that came and they talked with us for three or four hours. And it was about Jesus a lot. And they had gone through some cancers. And she had some troubles with kids that were far from God. And had a chance to pray with them later the next morning, even at breakfast. And then the next night, I said, well, let's go down to the fire again. And again, there was a, a younger couple this time. And again, we talked for three or four hours until they finally shut the lights off and said, you have to go back to your rooms or somewhere else. But I do praise the Lord Jesus. He has the right appointments. And no matter where you're going, like whether it's a vacation or to school or to the store, he can open up times. I've prayed with the, the clerks. I've prayed with kids that I've met. He has divine appointments for you. And it's exciting to let him, as she said, be the controller of your life. And I praise him for divine appointments. Any others? We don't want anybody to be left out. Today is a good day to glorify the Lord and tell of all the great things he has done in our lives. Uh, when the doctor told me that I had to have heart surgery, Dr. David Lloyd at Parkview on DuPont, and I highly recommend him, I told him, I said, it doesn't matter. I said, if I die, I go to heaven. And I Amen. said, if I don't, I come back to be with my family. I said, I'm all in. And he knew that my testimony was true. And so I just want you to know you can trust God through anything. Yes, amen. Any others? All righty, we'll read God's word. We have uh, two scripture readings today. The first is from the book of Mark, chapter 1. If you want to turn there, it's in your New Testament. That's after the Old Testament. And the second one will be in, chap in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2. And let's uh, stand uh, just briefly while we read God's word, just to show him our reverence. And as Sophie says, as we show that God, we fear him. Not with that scaredy fear of hiding under the bed, but that fear of, oh my gosh, look at all that the Lord has done for us. Mark chapter 1, verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water... John saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending upon Jesus like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Acts chapter 2. Not when you're there. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent windstorm came out from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Verse 6, when they heard this sound, this crowd of people, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we do come to you now, and we thank you, thank you, that you are the God in control of everything. Nothing in this world or anything that happens takes you by surprise. You know it all. 
You are there with us in the good times and in the bad times. In these changing times, in these times that the whole world is just going crazy. And the thing is, dear Lord, as it has been testified about you, you have divine appointments and we're all in for you, whether it's we die and go to heaven and see you or we are here with our family and friends and total strangers and we tell them about you, Lord God. We are in your hands. We do bring requests to you, dear Lord. We know Jerry Murray is going to have some eye surgery. We just pray and ask you be with him and lead the doctors and their great skill that you have gifted them with to bring this success to him. And Lois, dear Lord, she's going to have knee surgery. And we know she has her trust in you, Lord God. And we just pray and ask that you be with her and the surgery and the recovery and the physical therapy that may follow. And we know that you will guide her and lead her and let her and Jerry both be that light to those around them, that they would look at them and see you, Lord God. We pray and ask you be with Joe Ford, dear Lord. He's going to have back surgery. And we just pray and ask that you, again, touch the doctors and nurses and all that care for him and to be with him and reassure Barb that everything is okay, that in all that they have both gone through, that you have guided them and been with them and have your loving arms around them at all times. And we thank you for the testimony they can bring and say, God got us through this. Our faith held on and God got us through. And we pray and ask, dear Lord, that you be with Jenny Boyd's father. I haven't had an update, but I just pray and ask you continue to be with him and, and be with Jenny and Pat in this trying time, dear Lord. And we just can't imagine what they're going through in this way, but we know you are with them. And we pray and ask you continue to comfort them, dear Lord, and, and bring assurance to them and build their faith through this trying time. And we ask for that healing touch on her father. There's probably more I've forgotten, dear Lord, or don't know about it. I know the great thing is you know them all. And we just pray and ask that you be with them and be with Jean and Marcia. Dear Lord, as they're going to be having some things done, we pray and ask that you would be with them also, Lord God. And what testimonies we can all bring when we are seen through to the other side and say, thank you, Lord, for being there. And we pray and ask now you be with us in the rest of this service that our hearts and minds would be focused on you, dear Lord, and not all that crazy stuff going on outside, but that we have our hearts tuned into you on the inside, Lord God. And we thank you for that. And we pray and ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. Hope everybody's having a, a good day in the Lord. Keep your Bibles there open to Acts uh, chapter 2. We've been doing this series on the Holy Spirit, um, one of the greatest uh, passages of Scripture. But before I do, I, I kind of want to go back to, to this, uh, what was this called, Gage? A controller, right? And uh, I don't know about you, but the first, very first controller I had that I remember was my dad would go bowling on Monday nights. And we would go to Cook's Bowling Alley, and it was a thing called Pong. Does anybody remember the game Pong? Man, that was, that was awesome, wasn't it? That little thing. And it was just that one, one handle type thing. You move back and forth trying to stop that thing from getting past you. And then I moved up to Space Invaders, which was one Joyce, or Miss Pac-Man. And, and I remember that was Monica and I's game, Miss Pac-Man. We'd try to find as many quarters as we could as we were going down to supper at night and play that at Huntington University or college at that time. But when we got to this kind of a thing, I lost out because I had to do more with, with fingers and things. And um, I remember we had a Nintendo when those first came out. And I looked at that and I thought, that is going to be wild. Well, I, I got a little bit used to it, but... Um, I don't like to play it because it's not more than just one little item. It's, it's kind of difficult. And, um, but I will tell you this. Uh, once in a while, I'll beat my son on Nintendo. And last time we played football, I beat him. And I told him I'd never play him again since I won. 
<laughs> so anyways, this controller is a big deal. It's a big deal. I, I find that's why I think I like the remote controller because it's a one finger operation. And you know what I'm talking about, right? And so many times we want to be in control. But the problem is, in this passage of scripture that was just read, it's, these two were incredible things of invasions from heaven. I'm talking, these are some of the powerful mass passages of scripture. It's about heaven invading earth. Have you thought about that? Heaven invading earth. It's where literally the Holy Spirit comes and invades our universe in a way it had never invaded before. It's one of those situations where the life of Jesus was there, but the promising of the Holy Spirit was to come, and it came. It was a heaven invasion. What's cool is that heaven invasion happens today. But what does it really mean to have a heaven's invasion into earth, or heaven invade earth? First question I want to ask this morning, do you know heaven has invaded earth? I mean, Jesus himself talked about it to Nathaniel when he said in John chapter 1, verse 51, he says, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, I, I want you to stop and think about that. Jesus was talking about heaven coming down to earth, invading, and according to this, it was, it's through the angels. And if you stop and think about it, the birth of Jesus. There was a lot of angel stories, am I right? I mean, who came and talked to Mary? Who, who, who said, you're going to be with child? Who, who came to Joseph to say, take Mary to be your wife? Who, who told Joseph to take off and head for Egypt? Who came to the shepherds and told them that Jesus was at the manger? The angels. We even see it where there was an invasion from heaven when Jesus was baptized. Do you remember that story? He gets baptized and as soon as he comes out of the water, there was a voice from heaven and an a dove came down like the Spirit of God upon Jesus, and the voice from heaven said, what was it? This is my beloved son that I love, that I am well pleased. First sign of the Trinity coming together here on earth. It was an invasion from heaven. Do you remember when Jesus then went out into the wilderness and he fought the devil? At the very end, who came to his aid? The angels. See, heaven's been invading, but not like it did on Pentecost. There in Acts chapter 2, it was an astounding thing. It says there in verse 1 through 4, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everybody, everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Notice the disciples started to speak in other languages. Do you get this? I mean, we're at a festival. It would be like the street fair coming. And as we go down to the street fair, people were coming, but they were coming from all different types of languages. And all of a sudden, I was able to speak to each one of them. And they were able to hear me talking about Jesus in all different types of languages. Incredible. Incredible day. I mean, that Jerusalem was an international city. It had all different languages, Greek, Parathian, Egyptians, and other languages that they were all speak, being spoke to and they heard in their own language. I don't know about you, but I've been to Disney World before. 
And I kind of compare it to Disney World. I remember when I was a kid, we went to Disney World. And I remember when we left there, my mom made the comment, were we in another country? Because everybody was speaking so many other types of languages. Have you ever been there? And when you left, you're like, oh, I must have been in another country today. Oh, well, that's kind of what was happening. They were hearing what they needed to hear. But that wasn't what was so amazing. That brought people together. But look what it says in Acts chapter 2, verses 2 and 6. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. And they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. See, before they spoke the language, what happened? There was a loud noise from heaven. Heaven invaded earth. It was a roaring. It was loud. It was violent. It caught everybody's attention. I remember uh, just... A couple nights ago, I was talking to my neighbor, Morris. <clears throat> We're sitting out on the front porch, and it was night. You couldn't, you couldn't see anything. And all of a sudden, you heard this helicopter. And they were like, I wonder if that's landing yet. And Amber goes, oh, I, I think it did. And, or I don't think so. And all of a sudden, they had to get up, and they had to move out into the yard. I just stayed sitting. I knew it was a helicopter. I knew it was dark. I wouldn't be able to see it anyways. So what was the big deal? But they had to get up and they had to literally go over and look out in the yard to see if they could see this helicopter and try and figure out where it was at. Let me give you another illustration. Fire truck takes off. What do they start out with? And you're always wondering, where are they going? I'm going might follow this one to see what's going on. Have you ever been there before? I have. Or sometimes I see there's some trucks, and what do I do? I, I see the trucks, I hear the noise, I, it's only a couple blocks, they've already stopped. Let's just pull over to the side, walk down, see what's happening. That's what was happening on the day of Pentecost. They heard the noise, but it was a different noise than the siren. It was different than the helicopter. It was a wave, it was a wind, it was God speaking. And he started to speak to these people through these disciples, with other languages that everybody could hear. Amazing. Amen? I don't think it was amazing to you. Is it amazing? Man, I'm telling you, this was an exciting time. God speaking, heaven's invasion on earth. And it was the beginning of the Holy Spirit in a whole new way. It was a defining moment. A defining moment for humankind. The Holy Spirit arrives in Jerusalem. It was like a shockwave. And all the people around wanted to see what was going on. It was this coming of the Holy Spirit that once and for all destroyed the powers of the prince of this darkness, Satan. Do no longer allow him have control. It was the Holy Spirit that was coming with that loud sound. It was an earthquake sound. It was a sound that no, not only filled the hearts of the people around, but drew them to the church, drew them to the temple. And when the Holy Spirit starts to come upon us, people are going to want to flock to the church. Because they're going to wonder what's going on. But there's a second question. Has heaven invaded your earth? Has heaven invaded your earth? Has the Holy Spirit invaded your heart, mind, and soul? Has he? I mean, heaven has certainly invaded the city of Jerusalem with a, quite a number of people that were in Jerusalem. In fact... Heaven, the Holy Spirit, invaded so strongly that they were starting to see amazing things. Things they had never seen before. Like in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 through 41, when he says, Peter's words pierced their hearts. 
And they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to show that you have received forgiveness for your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles. Before then, it wasn't for us, the Gentiles. It was only for the Jews. And all who had been called by the Lord our God. And then Peter continued to preach for a long time. Not a short time, a long time. A long time. And I say that so many times, people will say, man, you might have preached too long or you preached too short. He was preaching for a long time and strongly urged all his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. And those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine that day? Now, remind you that they're talking to this group of people who 50 days plus earlier just crucified Jesus. This is a group of people that it was the mob who said, I want Jesus' blood. This is a group of people who said at the celebration of the Passover, said this is a time that we are going to take Jesus, who's been causing a lot of situations that's not what we want, and we're going to take him to the cross. We're going to make him die on a cross. They tortured him. And they put him to death for what they thought was a righteous cause. And they had convinced that what they were doing was the will of God. And getting rid of this person who was calling himself the Messiah. Now turn back to the day of Pentecost, 50 plus days later. Oh, and let me add you one more thing. Where were all the disciples 50 days back? They're in hiding. And Peter specifically, 50 days later, he's now the one who's preaching. The power of the Holy Spirit was so powerful on him that he began to preach, and the air started to clear. And their hearts started to be uh, hearing the word, and their minds started to understand. And they were experienced firsthand what Jesus had talked about, about the God Spirit who was going to come and move in and through them. And this group of people that was the ones who killed Jesus if they would have heard Peter say that back 50 plus days, he'd have been killed. But now G Peter's standing up in front of all them, and he starts to preach this. Repent. Go back two slides, I think it is. He says, each one of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized. Remind you, that's what Jesus had been saying all along, and they, were going to, they crucified him. Peter gets up, and he starts to share this, they didn't throw one stone at him. They didn't arrest him or the 120. The people could only listen and take the words of the Holy Spirit was speaking through Peter. See, Peter was a changed man. No longer was he the coward. I mean, it's like once a coward, always a coward. No, once a coward, you don't always have to be a coward because the Spirit of God came in him and the Spirit of God was moving through him. Once a betrayer, no longer a betrayer. He knew that the Spirit of God was in him and moving through him, and he knew this was what his mission was all about. Once an enemy of God, no longer an enemy of God. Because the Holy Spirit had rushed into the lives of Peter and the 120 other disciples that were there. But what made the difference? Well, that 120 followers of Christ, after he ascended, they were told to go into an upper room. And what did they do in the upper room? They prayed. And they prayed for unity. Why did they pray for unity? Because 
If they aren't unified, they're going to get divided very quickly. And that little group was transformed by God. It was not a human measurement. It was God coming in in a transforming way where he transformed their hearts. He transformed their minds. He transformed their souls. And they allowed the Holy Spirit to come in to redeem them, to regenerate them, to purify them, to cleanse them, to transform them, and to be sanctified, be set apart for the kingdom of God. Amen? And this is what Jesus died for. Jesus died, rose again, he ascended into heaven so that the people could repent and be cleansed of all their sins and be filled with the Holy Spirit to be in control. Jesus died so that we could have the heavenly host invade our lives from the inside out. He died so that the heavenly host inside us would be the power that will allow us to live in an imperfect world. Amen. So this leads me to the third question. Is heaven's invasion still happening in and around you? I mean, if you've asked Jesus Christ in your life, he initially has given you the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is still active and alive today. But he's only active and alive in us as we allow him to be active in our lives. The Holy Spirit is on the move. He's still cleansing. He's still transforming lives. He's transforming families. He's transforming cities. He's transferring, transforming nations. However... Each one of us can stop the Holy Spirit from moving. Did you realize that? Paul tells us very clearly in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, when he says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Absolutely. Grieving the Holy Spirit. Or he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, Do not put out the Spirit's fire. So the question this morning I'm asking you, how do we grieve the Spirit? How do we quench the Spirit? Selfishness? Do you have a selfish heart? I'm going to touch on something that I... This, is, this has been a thing for years. Selfishness is when we're worried about what we're singing rather than worshiping God. It is. You have to have it your way. That's selfishness, period. That's a sin. Or let's put it this way. I think I'll go do what I want to do on Sunday rather than be at church because I can be a Christian and not go to church. Show me that in the scriptures. I can show you where Jesus, and we're supposed to be like Jesus, I can show you where he was at the, the temple or being with a group of people talking about God every day of his life. Where two or three are gathered in his name, that's where the church is. Am I right? Amen. But because of selfishness, we try to um, justify ourselves. See, it, it comes back to this. We want to control everything. That's what selfishness is. And what I find is when you have more knobs and more things to hit, the harder it becomes. And you've got to release everything if you want freedom in God. How do we quench the spirit? An unforgiving heart. If you have an if you have something against somebody today, that is sin. Amen. Just going to tell you what it is. And as you come in, you grieve the Holy Spirit if you don't take care of it. That is sin. That's what not, does not allow the Spirit of God to flow in your services. 
a critical spirit. I think some of us come in and we think we are the judges for the Olympics. And, uh, okay, how did Scott do today? Oh, I'm going to give him a 10. 10, 10, 10. How did Pastor do today? Well, let's take the zero off. One, one, one. Who made you the judge? It's a critical spirit that comes from Satan that wants to destroy. You become the dividing point in the church. And if the Spirit of God is living in you, you're going to start looking at it through the eyes of God rather than your own eyes. Amen. Some of us are so apathetic. No one even knows the Spirit of God lives in you. Some of us come in with such complacent hearts that we're so divided. We want to do the things of the world, yet we want to come to church, get what we want, and then as we leave, we got what we want, selfishness, and boom, we're out of here. See, when the Spirit of God comes on us, He's going to move us in ways we've never seen before. But here's the catch. You can stop that spirit. It can just be one person in the church that can control that spirit by their critical attitudes. Take Demas. Demas was a man, if you look in, um, in the Bible, uh, you'll see that he was following Paul everywhere. He was a co-worker with Paul. Paul was excited to have him. He was going everywhere, preaching and teaching and doing the things with Paul. And then all of a sudden... He stopped the flow of God's Holy Spirit in his life. He didn't have the passion he once did. And I'm just going to stop right here on this story because I think there's a lot of people who lose their passion for the Lord once their kids get out of the church or gets, gets on their own. I hate to say that, but it's true. I, I, I've served my time. Man, if I heard that once, I've heard it a thousand times. Well, I was going to be a lie, so I don't want to lie. I've heard it several times. You serve until you're done, and life's over. Amen. And Demas was one of these that lost passion. Something happened. Maybe someone said something ugly to them, and so they said something ugly. They, they thought, I can't be around those kind of people anymore. Man, I'm just telling you right now, if that was the case for me, I'd been out of the church clear back when I first started. I think the first day I went to the church, someone told me I wasn't wearing the right clothes. See, when the Holy Spirit came upon Demas, he was on fire. But look what happens. Paul talks about Demas again in the letters to Timothy, in 2 Timothy, how Demas left. Look at this. Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Demas allowed the world to come back into him. And that's part of the problem. We're allowing the world to come into us rather than being filled with the Spirit and allowing the Spirit to move through us. chose to follow the world rather than to follow the Spirit of God. And Demas stands as a warning for us. We are never to grieve or quench the Holy Spirit in our lives. For by doing this, we are truly asking the Holy Spirit to leave us. And when he leaves us, man, it, it becomes really hard. But we need to be more like the disciples who allowed the Holy Spirit to invade their lives. The Bible tells us amazing things happened to them and through them. People were being saved, about 3,000. That was probably 3,000 men, not counting the women and children. Those people's lives were starting to be transformed in a way that it was never done before. Paul standing up amongst those people who just killed Jesus and went to oppose those people and tell them the story of what they did to Jesus and told them to repent and turn to God. 
congregations were on fire. It was about winning people for the kingdom so they didn't get lost in the eternity of hell. And we're more worried about us just staying out of the eternity of hell and not about our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our co-workers, families, and even cities were changed. I invite you to come this morning with an open heart, open mind, and open hands. And ask God to refresh you, to renew you. I'm asking that you allow the Holy Spirit that invaded back then. This is the same Holy Spirit that invades us today. Heaven invades earth through us now. We become like the Peters and Pauls and Timothys today. Amen? He has to invade our lives, even to the point of the secret things where he needs to cleanse us and purify us so we begin to see things through the eyes of God and follow and obey. I think it's interesting. Scripture says very clearly, you're my disciples if you obey my commands. My question, have you been obeying? Well, I don't, I don't even know what those commands are. We'll get in the Word. He tells us to. That's how Satan wants to keep you from knowing the truth of God. He wants you to take time. It's not like you just come in here on a Sunday morning and this is it, man. No. No. you got to do it every day. Getting into the Word. Praying. Talking to the Holy Spirit. Asking God, how can I serve you when you get up that morning? How do I serve you today? Who is it this morning or this afternoon or this uh, evening, Lord, that you need me to come in contact with? That it becomes a divine appointment that you come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Has he invaded your life? Has the Holy Spirit just come in? And is he active? There's the key word. Is he active in you? This means we have to give ourselves completely to him. That means we surrender everything and allow him then to fill those empty voids so you can do kingdom business. This morning, the way we're going to close is we're going to have a quiet time. So if you can't open up the altars this morning, we're just going to have a quiet time where you're at. If you feel like you're too close to somebody, I just ask that you move. Just move, you know. It's social, social distancing anyways. Um, that will be a great thing that you can just get with you and God. And when you are done talking with the Lord and feel like you have been filled up, we ask that you just leave through the side doors this morning. And as you walk out, just remember that you stay as quiet as you can so that you're not a distraction in here. And may the Spirit of God just blow on you and rush through you and move through you that you become so active that people see there's something different going on. And you give Him the glory. Times of refreshing Here in your prayer no greater blessing than being with you. My soul is restored, my mind is renewed. There's no greater joy. Lord, in being with you, in times of refreshing, here in your presence, no greater blessing. 
than being with you. My soul is restored. My mind is renewed. There's no greater joy, Lord, than being with you. Times of refreshing here in your presence. No greater blessing than being with you. My soul is restored. My mind is renewed. There's no greater joy, Lord, than being.